Hey guys, Furum here, and today I'm going to be showing you the Lamborghini Gallardo in multiplayer in the Asphalt 9, this time at three stars, driven by three racers. We've got Uwerk Nice Client, who has provided the first couple of races, Bebop, who has provided the next few, and RPM Stingray, who has provided the last couple of ones. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already, and enjoy the video. I think it's pretty cool to occasionally make a video with races from a few different people. I think I did this a while back in Asphalt 8 for one, where I did not get the twin mill, I think it was. Oh yes, that brings back bad memories. I didn't win that car, primarily because I just forgot to start it. But let's not think about that right now. Thanks to these guys for these races. Now, this car, I did make a video about a little while back at two stars, but a lot of people did manage to get it at three stars and above, so I figure it might be worth making another video there. And I found someone with a golden Gallardo too, so you can expect that sometime in the future as well. So I wanted to take this video as sort of an opportunity to talk a little bit more about the upcoming update to Asphalt. 9. As you guys are probably aware, I posted a video a couple of days ago about the new car's stock stats in the update. However, since that video has come out, we have gotten the patch notes and the max stats of the cars. You may have wondered why I haven't made a video about those yet. Well, I don't usually like to make more than two videos about a single update, because that just seems a bit too much. Presumably, the update should be coming out pretty soon, especially since we don't have any new multiplayer seasons right now, and I don't think they would hold that off for more than a couple days. So whenever the update does release, because we are getting a new track that I cannot really say anything about, but they did say that in the patch notes, so there you go. I'll be hopefully making a video showing that as well as the max stats of the cars and put all of that into one video. That first race was pretty close, but in this one, Nice Client has an extremely close duel with a Legions United member. And by the way, Legions United has now expanded to the iOS platform. Because I am not on iOS, I do not have too many details about that, but I know they've done it in the past couple of weeks. And I know some of you have asked me about that, so I just wanted to let you guys know. While I'm not making a video specifically about the new cars in the next update yet, at least at max, I would like to give my initial opinions on the stats, because yes, I have seen the maxed ones, and they're interesting. The Corvette C7R, which a lot of people point out in the comments, probably shouldn't have been in Class D. Anyway, that car has stats fairly close to that of the Furi, with slightly better top speed, pretty much the same acceleration. Nitro better and a bit worse handling, though. It's probably going to be fairly similar to that car on most tracks, but a little bit better, I would expect. The Corvette Stingray looks decently competitive for multiplayer, but isn't particularly remarkable overall, being fairly close to the Acura, I would say with better nitro efficiency, slightly worse acceleration, pretty much the same handling, and a slightly better top speed. And here, Nice Clan and this Legions Unite member are neck and neck, pretty much, coming up to the finish line, almost right next to each other, but Nice Clan does manage to cross in first place. And now we move on to a few races from Bebop, and this first one is against another three-star Gallardo, as well as three two-star ones. Another car coming in the update is the 4GT Mark II, which is a B-class car that is a little bit confusing at max. It has by far the lowest top speed in Class B, but the highest acceleration in Class B, and I think like the second highest or third highest in the game, it's really high up there at 86 point something. It kind of looks like what you'd get if you'd cross the acceleration and top speed of the Ortega Super Lettera, or whatever it's called from Class C, with the Pininfarina's handling. So it's probably going to become sort of like a lower Huracan or something like that and I'm not entirely sure what the point in adding that is other than to give another car for people that really like those super agile cars to play around with. Now, I do not know how easy it is going to be to get, but I don't suspect that it will be worth it for a whole lot of people. I'm sure it'll be extremely fun to drive, probably honestly one of the most fun cars in the game to drive, but just not very useful outside of lower ranked multiplayer. Although, if it is good enough, I can definitely imagine some people who get it probably using it in some higher multiplayer leagues and being able to do decently well just because of how forgiving it's probably going to be. But we'll have to see. Here Bebop crosses the finish line in first place with this two-star Gallardo not far behind him. And in the next race, he is facing two more three-star Gallardos as well as a four-star one. And this is on the Caribbean, which is a track where this car should do pretty well on. Now, the other car that will be coming in the new update is the Bailey Blade GT1, which I predicted in my stock stats video that it would be 
be kind of like an upgraded version of the Trion Nemesis. And at max, I can tell you that, yes, that definitely looks like it's going to be the case, as long as the uh, handling and drifting are good enough. Because while it does have a low handling stat, just like the Trion Nemesis, remember that car actually drifts extremely well. So actually, its top speed, acceleration, and handling stats are all extremely close to that of the max Trion Nemesis. However, its max nitro is, get this, 70. So we've got a car with the agility of the Triad Nemesis and its speed with the nitro efficiency of some of the best nitro efficiency cars in the game, really. Like, not the very best, but getting pretty high up there, at least. If this thing truly can book it around turns like the Trion can, we have truly got a new contender on our hands, probably going to be one of the new most popular multiplayer cars in the game, because that thing is almost definitely going to be better than the Rymac, and it likely will be easier to get than the Esco, although at this point, with the Esco Grand Prix, I think a lot more people got that car and might not feel like they need to go for another high-end S-Class car so soon, and people might not have the tokens anyway, so I'm not entirely sure how popular that one's actually going to be, how many people are actually going to get it, but it's definitely going to be very good. The four-star Garrotter comes in second, but he wasn't actually at his maximum upgrades for four-star, but in this race we are facing a fully upgraded four-star Garrotter. So you can see that one there, it doesn't actually start up a whole lot quicker. The Garrotter is one of those cars that doesn't actually improve a ton once you go from stock to max, as much as something like the, say, Huracan or other more recent cars in Asphalt 9 may have tended to do. Cars like this are ones where it is generally easier to do better in multiplayer seasons where you don't have a maxed car, for example. Like, I did better in the season where I had a one-star Venino than the season where I had a four out of five-star Aventador J. I don't know entirely what that was due to, but it was just an interesting little phenomenon that I noticed. At this point, the five-star Garado had pretty much fallen off the map, and Bebop elects to take the way to the right here, where the five-star Garado takes the way to the left. Now, I'm not entirely sure which of these is better if you are in a more agile car like this one. I still usually go to the left, because for me, it's always been faster, and he does appear to catch up there, but then I think he runs into a problem around the turn and then falls back behind again. So, I don't know, let me know, which way do you guys go? Because I know the way up top is better in more top speed oriented cars, but in ones like the Corvette, for example, which can keep their speed all of the way through those sections in the more twistier route off to the right, it might be slightly better. I've seen some people go that way instead. And now we are on to our final couple of races driven by RPM Stingray. In this race, he is facing two two-star Garados, but also a 3,900 ranked one. That's 800 ranks above this. I can only imagine that that is pretty much as close to max as you can get at this point. So the SC18 Grand Prix is going pretty well for me. It would be going better if I hadn't completely forgotten to play the fifth round. I feel a little bit embarrassed about that, but it happened, and I'm just going to see what I can do at this point. I'm definitely going to try my best in the final, final round, and let's see if I can get top five even with missing that round there with two stars. It will definitely be close, and not the kind of close that I enjoy having. Also, guys, don't forget to check out my new Asphalt 9 music video if you haven't yet. Yet. It's my seventh asphalt music video that I have made, and it is called Special Events. And, well, the title pretty much tells you exactly what it's about, but it's definitely worth a listen. And here, Stingray takes the victory against this nearly maxed Huracan. It is crazy that C-Class cars are now getting almost over 4,000 rank at max. Now for the final race in the video in which Stingray is racing on coincidentally the same track as the previous race, this one is against a two-star Gerardo, but it was actually a very close one. You can see there that the two-star Gerardo really doesn't start up all that much slower than the three-star one. Now something interesting is that this car actually has quite a large jump in terms of rank increase by a lot more than actually all of the other star up increases on this car, and we will get to see how this car performs at Golden Max by Rev Chaudhry, who got top one on Android in the Garado multiplayer season that just finished, so stay tuned for that. And I think I have finally quit calling this car the Huracan for some reason. I do not know why I did that. So now it is time for my general review about this car. It is a high-end C-Class car, not as good as the Aranera or Venser overall, although probably on Osaka and Caribbean and some other twistier tracks it could put up a good fight, although I think this car really shines in multiplayer in particular. 
particular. Thank you all for watching, and thanks to Nice Client, Bebop, and RPM Stingray for these races. Please like the video if you've enjoyed, and consider subscribing for more Asphalt and other games content. And I will see you in my next video. Goodbye!